Welcome dear students to Computer Study Standard 9th English Medium Chapter Number 5 Part 3 Name of the chapter is Introduction to Operating System Now the topic which we are going to discuss or the first topic which we are going to discuss is the typical components of an operating system. In this section, we briefly discuss the components typically associated with an operating system and the full environment surrounding the operating system. Now before I explain you anything, one thing I am 110% sure that if the same thing if you try to read from the textbook then 110 percent you will not be able to understand exactly what the things are so kindly watch the video with full concentration and also hit the like button if you like the video then i will prepare new videos also on the same chapter and complete this chapter fine now here the first thing is device driver Next thing is kernel and the third thing is shell or interface. So from that first uh, I will explain you what exactly the device driver is. Now we all are familiar with the word device or hardwares which we use in the computer. Am I right? We can say mouse, keyboard, printer, speaker. These all are the hardwares or devices which we use fine now for operating each and every device there is a small program installed inside our computer for example we are able to use mouse then we are able to use the mouse because the mouse driver or mouse driver programs are installed in the computer keyboard drivers program are installed in the computers we are able to play the songs on and we are able to hear the songs to speaker because sound drivers are installed. We are able to take the printout because printer drivers are installed in our computer. Now there are some of the drivers which comes along with the operating system. For example, for mouse, keyboard, you don't need to install separate drivers. But for sound, printer and so many other things, you may need to install those drivers separately also. So the meaning of driver or device driver is small programs with the help of which we can make the use of specific or different device. Now to see the device driver you, have, you can give a right click on uh, computer icon and go to uh, this thing manager and from there you will be able to see which which drivers are there see Microsoft AC adapter, Microsoft Surface ACP these all are the different drivers and sometimes you need to update the driver also if you don't need you can install uninstall them also and this is the looks of windows 7 from uh, by giving the right click i have gone to this thing and here you can see the different device drivers list fine now we come to the next concept and that is kernel what is the meaning of kernel now we all are familiar with uh, different hardware CPU. Can we see the CPU? Yes, CPU means processor. We can see the processor, right? We have seen the images also of processor in the previous videos. Memory, memory is hard disk or pen drive or RAM. These all things, those all things are also hardware which we can see. And other devices, other hardware, printer, speaker, keyboard, these all things we can see. Now, if we talk about CPU or memory, now uh, can we communicate with CPU directly? Can we communicate with memory directly? Yes or no? No, we cannot straight away communicate with CPU, memory or other hardware also. Okay. Now, for that we will come to this point applications now we use different programs 
we can also call it applications microsoft word microsoft powerpoint paint program vlc player right different programs we use now through this program we can access this hardware am i right if you want to take the print out of a document which you typed in microsoft word means in application if you type the document you can take the print out with the help of this application so applications are able to communicate with this hardware softwares application means softwares are able to communicate with hard hardware how are they able to communicate who is the interface who links both of them there comes the role of kernel kernel is the thing which serves as a bridge between the hardware and the softwares and allows the smooth working of the computer it is the core component or we can say the main program of the operating system without which everything will be useless the kernel is the core component of or uh, the main program of the operating system now we will see some other works and other key functions of the kernel also okay just now we had seen this key features that it serves as a bridge between hardware and software now other features we will see detecting a new hardware when attached and loading appropriate drivers to access it for example if you insert anything new in your pen drive slot then it will show new driver detected am i right so that is the work done by the kernel next thing accessing and controlling all hardware devices through device driver now device driver you know are the small programs through which we can use the different hardware such as printer and speaker and so many things so somebody needs to access them and control them right so that is done by the kernel then another main role is resource allocation and management in the previous video i had explained you that resource what is resource and uh, how to manage in the role of operating system i had explained you this thing in detail then creating stopping and controlling program execution scheduling program execution providing cpu io that is input output and memory protection io management that is input output management security these all are also the roles of the kernel so by some definitions kernel is the operating system actually it is not the operating system this is wrong in your textbook it is the heart or the main core component of the operating system fine now we come to the third term and that is shell i have given an easier word to you to understand what is shell what easier word i have given there interface interface means for example computer understands everything in the form of zero and one in binary language everything which is stored in the computer is in the form of zero and one am i right but here you can see the graphics here you can see black and blue color in the background white color strip on which the shell is written right like this way we can see the graphics we can see the start button so many thing icons and so the thing okay which converts this zeros and one into the thing which we can understand is known as the work of interface now there are two types of interface graphical user interface and command line interface so first we will have a look at graphical user interface which we all are familiar with this is the screenshot of windows 7 right like this way it looks internally everything is stored in the form of zeros and ones but here you can see the windows like this way you can click on the start menu you can open any program you can do any work you can double click on any icon these all things so that is due to the shell and which type of shell is this graphical shell or graph graphical user interface another type of, uh, this is another example windows 10 right here the interface is little bit different but both the interfaces are graphical user interface but when the computer was invented newly okay at that time there were no graphics 
for doing any sort of work in the computer you had to type commands and to learn computer was not a easy job like today it was not a fun to use the computer it was a difficult job you had to remember so many commands and you had to exactly type the commands without any spelling mistake without any space mistake okay so that was like this way a black color screen was there in which you had to type different commands now here also there was a interface who used to allow you to type in this type of commands and that interface is known as command line interface remember the word c l i command line interface we come to the next topic and that is file system okay we all are familiar with file system here this is the screenshot of windows 7 my computer as soon as i open my computer i can see that my hard disk is divided into different partitions my hard disk is divided into four part five partitions local disk c local disk d local disk e f and g right and in different partitions i have stored different things for example in local disk c what have i stored i have stored all the i have installed all the program files right okay here i have stored different softwares here i have stored some other files so this is our windows file operating system now if i double click on local disk c then it will show me the folders which are lying inside local disk c and here you will see in the address bar that after computer it will show local disk c now in local disk c if i open program files then here it will show computer local disk c and program files and so on so it is a in a hierarchical order okay and uh, you can go ahead like this way and by pressing this back button you can come one one step back so this was all about windows file system now in ubuntu file system it is totally different in ubuntu file system there are no partitions of the hard disk in your mobile phone also there is ubuntu type of operating system only and that is why in your mobile phones memory card also there are no partitions at all okay so here everything is considered as root okay in ubuntu there are no partitions everything is considered as root and everything is stored in the same hard disk no partitions at all now here a diagram is given in which you are shown the hierarchy okay and in ubuntu language folder are known as directory remember this word all the folders are displayed in the green color while files are displayed in blue color now one silly thing is given here that inside a folder you can save the files obviously we know that inside the folder we can save any number of files here also it's given that in uh, this directory this file is saved this folder is saved inside this folder this folder this file this all things are saved like that way it is now one thing as this topic has come i would like to share with you is uh what is the benefit of doing partitions in the hard disk which we do in windows or what are the drawbacks of not creating partitions any idea of it i will explain you if you do partitions in the hard disk then what will happen i will tell you that for example if there is virus affect if virus has affected my computer then what shall i do i will format local disk c all the program files all the viruses which has been installed here will get lost will get deleted but my data which is stored in different drives different partitions will remain intact i will not lose my data my data will be safe only the programs will get deleted and after formatting the computer i will install the operating system and programs and that is the main benefit of windows operating system where we can do partitions while here in ubuntu there are no facility of doing partitions so if there is virus attack or if some problem is there then when you format your computer your all the data will get lost 